So when my client Lynn came to me, she had been struggling with IBS for over 20 years. And she was at a stage where she had almost given up and had sort of just accepted it as a new normal for her. Uh, but after implementing some of the strategies that I'll be sharing with you today, she started to feel improvements already after just a few days and had more or less taken control of her IBS after just a couple of months. So if you are as excited as I am to get into this video with you today, uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell just to make sure that you stay updated on whenever I post a new video. And if this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Anna. I'm a holistic health and nutrition coach and I especially help people heal their gut to be free of digestive distress and things like IBS and also fatigue, anxiety, and instead just feeling more light, free, and vibrant in their bodies. And if you want some more information on that, I'll just be sharing a link in the description below. So most likely you have been given the diagnosis IBS after everything else has been ruled out. And maybe even your doctor has told you that, you know, everything looks fine, nothing is wrong, <laughs> we can't really say what it is, so it's IBS. And that's very common. So that's just like the, when everything else has been ruled out, it's, it's IBS. Um, perhaps you're just, you know, kind of left with nothing or you're given some kind of medication. Maybe you're given a, a list of foods to, to eliminate, but nothing more than that. Either way, I want you to know that your IBS should of course be taken seriously. Even if nothing looks wrong, even if everything else has been ruled out, the symptoms are there. And it's of course your body's way of communicating that something isn't right. But with that said, and I do want you to know that with the right um, diet, the right kinds of foods and the right lifestyle, you can totally take control over your IBS and avoid any crazy flare-ups. And before we continue, I would really love to know what would you say, what is the biggest frustration for you uh, when it comes to having IBS? So let me know in the comments below. So by definition, IBS is when the communication between your gut and your brain is not functioning as it should. And it's expressed through um, an overly sensitive gut. So this can be everything from having sudden runs to the bathroom, not making it to the bathroom. It can be having a lot of gas, uh, bloating, constipation, and it's all all of these symptoms are very intense. So basically treating your IBS is all about rebuilding that connection between your gut and your brain. All right, so we're gonna, of course, dive into a few different ways of how you can actually do this. But I wanted to just mention first, so the, the absolute most well key thing is to actually understand the underlying um, reason for your IBS. So IBS, it can be triggered uh, from a lot of different things. So it could be a, a poor diet, it could be stress, it could be, for example, if, um, you know, if you have been taking antibiotics for a very, very long time. So there are a lot of different reasons for it. So the key thing is to really understand where it comes from. But I'll be sharing some things that are helpful no matter where your IBS actually came from. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is food. So the, the food you're eating, the food that you're nourishing your body with. I know that a very common question is when, when it comes to IBS is, okay, so what 
exactly can I, what should I be eating to actually treat my IBS to avoid any flare-ups. And I think if we're just looking at, we start to look at the gut and how it actually works. So we're just going to do this very briefly, but uh, basically in, in your gut, you have both a good and bad bacteria. It's exactly how it is supposed to be, but you want your gut, also like known as healthy gut bacteria to, to rule down there so that it can actually take care of your gut, to heal your gut, make sure that it is functioning as it should. And that means that we also need to feed the healthy gut bacteria. And pretty much the only thing that the healthy gut bacteria eats is fiber. And where do we find fiber? In plant-based foods. And only I say only in plant-based foods, so not in animal-based foods, um, so not in, in meat, not in dairy, etc., but only in plant-based foods. And when I say plant-based, I mean everything from you know vegetables, fruits, berries, nuts, seeds, uh, grains, um, etc. So in terms of food, that's really what you want to, to focus on. But with that said, when you do have IBS, so when your gut is extra sensitive, you don't want to do it, uh, overdo it in, in the beginning. Uh, when you're having a, a very sensitive gut, if you're boosting your intake of fiber too much, that can actually overwhelm your gut and it causes even more distress. So best way is to do things very slow and steady. And a really good way to do this is to do the low FODMAP diet. I'm not gonna get into detail uh, around this, uh, this kind of diet just because I have a separate video on that. I'll just share that in the description below so you can check that out after. But basically the, the low FODMAP diet is a really great way to introduce fiber um, to your gut so and in doing that in a very you know sweet and, and gentle way so that you're actually helping your gut to to get used to um, to more fiber you know you can almost think of it as going to the the gym so if let's say if you haven't been to the gym in like two years if you go and you do let's say an hour of crossfit training that's probably gonna make you feel more crappy afterwards than, than good. So it's kind of the same with all these things. We really want to, to do things um, in a sweet and gentle way. We want to, to build up to, and in this case, when we're talking about fiber, um, kind of build our way up to, to eating more fiber. All right, and the second thing that I want to get into is that it's not only what you're eating, but also how you're eating. So now we're tapping into a little bit of uh, intuitive eating. Because maybe, you know, you've come to a stage where there is a lot of a fear and an anxiety around food, which is completely normal when, of course, when you're having a lot of intense um, flare-ups, um, of course, that relationship with food gets a little bit out of whack. So it's, it's very common that there is a lot of that fear and an anxiety coming up um, around food. You know, maybe you're feeling worried about what foods will, will actually trigger symptoms um, or maybe you're feeling confused because one day you can eat, you know, for example, if it's oats and then the other day oats are trigger triggering a lot of symptoms uh, for you. So it might be that you get to a stage then where you actually start to eliminate foods that you think are triggering symptoms or just as a way to try and, and give your gut um, a rest, which I definitely understand. But um, starting to eliminate, especially plant-based foods, can actually cause a lot more harm than, than good. And it kind of goes back to where we talked about, um, you know, your healthy gut bacteria it needs a lot of fiber to survive and they need a lot of different kinds of fiber from 
different kinds of, um, of plant-based foods. So again, starting to just eliminate a lot of, um, of foods that you think um, or suspect are, are triggering symptoms, again, can actually do you more harm than, than any good. So intuitive eating, so that could be everything from listening to your hunger cues, feeling your fullness, um, just mindful eating combined with what kinds of foods you're eating is a really, really powerful tool for rebuilding that trust with food again. And if you want to dive deeper into intuitive eating, I have a couple of separate videos on that that I'll just be sharing in the description below. And um, so you can just tune into those after this uh, video. So I mentioned in the beginning that the definition of IBS is when your the communication between your gut and your brain is a little bit out of, of whack, which is why it's so important to treat IBS from a holistic point of, of you. And um, especially because stress is such a big trigger, um, not only for IBS itself, but also it can so easily trigger any, any kind of digestive distress. And that could be emotional stress, it can be stress from, from work. Obviously, some stress is always going to be present in our lives, but I'm talking about that kind of stress that's becoming a, um, a constant in your life and just that kind of stress stress that is, that is controlling your life and is, has a, um, a negative tone to it, um, since there's also more positive stress, um, but more I'm talking more about that uh, negative kind of stress. So what is one simple thing you can do to manage your stress? Your breath. Sounds very simple, very basic, but um, controlling your breath and breathing properly um, is, is very powerful in, in this sense. The thing is what, what happens when, um, when we are stressed, we tend to breathe into the chest. So, you know, if you do pay attention to your breath when you are stressed, you'll notice that you, you breathe up here. You don't breathe into the belly, but you, you breathe up here. Um, so as a way to, to manage our stress, so one thing we can do is to shift so that we're not breathing into the chest, but we're breathing into the belly. Um, and you know this is something you can do anywhere any time of the day um, you can just do it for for five minutes obviously you can do it for longer if you want to but five minutes is really enough for you to to feel that shift happening in your body so i just wanted to quickly show you we're not gonna do the uh, entire five minutes now um you can just try this on your own after the the video but i just wanted to um to show you the the technique and how you can actually do this so um, a good thing is to I mean first of all just find a, a comfortable seat and you can then place one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly so this is just so you can actually feel that the movement shifts from um, the chest into the belly the chest will always move a little bit but we want the uh, the majority of the movement to to be around the the belly area so, and you're gonna inhale and exhale through the, the nose. So on your inhales, you want to feel that the, the belly is expanding, almost like a, a balloon. And then on your exhales, you're gonna feel it deflate again. So this is the movement that you want to feel. If this is very new to you, you know, just focus on taking a few deep uh, breaths and just feeling this movement. Um, you can even do some internal counting as well. So you can inhale for, you know, four counts and then exhale for four counts. But, you know, just if this is new for you, just focusing on that shift happening. So definitely give this a go and, um, and do let me know afterwards how, how that felt for you. All right, so I hope that these tips were, were helpful for you. And, you know, also remember that your inner power and strength is also reflected by the state of your gut. So by healing your gut, by taking back control of your IBS, you are also taking back control of your inner power and strength. 
And if you want more personalized help and accountability to treat your IBS, uh, make sure to uh, book your free consultation call with me today. Uh, I'm gonna share the link to do that in the description below. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, uh, please give it a, a thumbs up and uh, also uh, subscribe. And I would also love to hear what is one thing that you can do this week to start taking back control of your IBS. So let me know in the comments below. And with that said, thanks so much for being here and uh, see you next time.